It is said that the brood chamber of the dung beetle gave the ancient Egyptians in their search for immortality the idea of embalming their pharaohs in tombs below pyramids. The remains of those who slaved to dig these tombs lie below great piles of soil. But unlike the pyramids of ancient Egypt, these will soon be destroyed by wind and the feet of many elephants. And unlike the pharaohs, the passage of time and the changing of seasons will bring rebirth to the entombed beetles lying below the arid plains of Araba. The beetles in their brood chambers would be safe were it not for the habits of one remarkable animal the honey badger. This conspicuous looking predator gets its name from a reputation as a raider of beehives, but few people know of its appetite for the larvae of Heliocopris dillini, the largest dung beetle in the world. The honey badger is a pillager of tombs. Four nights after the first heavy rain, thousands upon thousands of beetles emerge from the soft soil to begin life above ground. This giant among dung beetles is irrevocably tied to that other giant, the elephant, for it feeds exclusively on organisms in elephant dung. The beetles may have to fly far to find the elephants, but once they've picked up the scent of dung, they fly straight along the trail towards it. The morning sun illuminates two conical pyramids, evidence of a second, deeper tunnel, bypassing the storage chamber. The female is now some three feet below the surface and she's stopped digging. The tip of her antenna has the appearance and the manner of a nervous Martian. It's only the size of a pinhead and it's never still for more than a moment. What an extraordinary appendage it is. It's the beetle's main receptor, relaying all sorts of information to the brain. Perhaps right now, it's receiving information about the temperature and humidity of the soil, which tells the beetle she's reached the right depth to dig the brood chamber. Some beetles make only two brood balls, others as many as eight. All the balls in the brood chamber are complete. The two-week-old larva, ugly as ever, is still munching his way around the ball. Only decay measures the passing of time in the darkness of the tomb. transformation is underway. If the ancient Egyptians did witness this extraordinary death and rebirth of the king of beetles, perhaps they were justified in believing that their pharaohs too could be reborn. Mm -hmm.